To start my review of this course, I wanted to share my favorite quote from George's book. A story about a world changer might engage us, but becoming world changers will change us. Innovator's Mindset What are the key components of developing an innovator's mindset? Each of the following topics I touch on are important to have if a person wants to be the change the book talks about. Change. If we want meaningful change, we have to make a connection to the heart before we can before we can make a connection to the mind. Change is not only hard but scary, but necessary. What is best for the learner? The best way to have a good idea is to have lots of ideas. As educators, I feel we not only isolate ourselves, but our students from their own strengths by not providing them with the best possible education and tools that they need. Observant. Making connections between the powerful information that's being freely shared online allows educators to expand learning possibilities for their students. There is so much out there for us to find, learn, and share. Creativity, problem finder, solver. I originally thought as a teacher that being a problem solver was a key to student success. Today, my learners are problem seekers first and then solvers. They are always asked to show and use their creativity no matter what it is. Risk takers. With that, we need to remember that we need to take risks, both as educators and learners. Asking our students to take a risk might be the biggest move of their life to push them to their potential. Relationships are very important. Relationship building has actually been very important to me throughout the years. Building relationships with your learners come, should come first. Relationships, relationships, relationships. Empathy. The innovator's mindset starts with empathy for our students. New ideas start with understanding the needs of those you serve. Empower. Our role as educators is to empower students to see themselves as innovators who take responsibility for their own learning and leading. It is not always simple, but when it does happen, it is empowering. Resilient. Innovators must be prepared to move forward even when the risk of rejection is involved. This is something I know I personally need to work on. Nobody likes to see themselves as failures, but once you stop seeing yourself that way, you can move forward. Reflection. Reflection is powerful for learning and for personal growth. I know that during this course, I blogged for the first time, and after going through my blogs, I noticed I really opened up and reflected on the questions more than I usually have in the past. Networked. One person's ideas can spark the light and desire in others. As educational learners, we must promote and capitalize on open, connected learning. We need to build trust with our students and build a safe environment where they feel free to collaborate with others. One person's ideas can reach a million people. Vision. In a place where, there, where every learner is encouraged to reach his or her dreams, there, these what-ifs can become reality. Never stop asking questions or pushing the boundaries of what is possible for learning for our students. Strength-based leadership. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. If you want to build on strengths of our students, we need to develop them as learners who explore their passions and talents. Why haven't I been doing this? Reading the Innovator's Mindset book really got me thinking, why haven't I been doing this? In every chapter, there has been some topic that sparked my mind asking that question. To answer it, I simply need to develop the component I just talked about to become an innovator. Would you want to be a learner in your own classroom? This question from George's book still rings in my head. This course helped me realize that no, no, I would not. And I know I have a different perspective on what a learner in my classroom should be. Goals and objectives. The second part of this course talked about evaluation. To start an evaluation, a good question to begin with is what are the goals and objectives? This answer helps, this helps answer if the right things are being done or not. Formative and summative evaluations. Both forms of evaluation should be used. Formative evaluations are used throughout the evaluation to make sure the materi materials used in the curriculum are achieving the best possible outcomes. Summative evaluations are used at the end. The evaluator's role. As an evaluator, you could contribute to a proposal prior to the initial and funding of an effort. There are also many other roles that the book talked about. Um, 
Thanks for listening.